Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. In this video lecture, we will be talking about northern blotting. Okay. Now, before understanding northern blotting, it's very important that you know southern blotting or at least to any of the blotting techniques because northern blotting is very, very similar with southern blotting technique. So, if you don't know about the southern blotting technique yet, I will recommend you to watch my southern blotting video which the description is provided and the link is provided in the description as well as uh, the link I will try to put here in the annotation. Watch that video first because there is small modifications of the southern blotting in case of northern blotting. Okay? So let us see. Blotting is a process of detecting any macromolecules that we deal with like DNA, RNA or proteins. If it is a process of detecting DNA, we call it a southern blotting. If it is a process of detecting RNA, we call it northern blotting. Because the names like with the directions, but actually it is nothing to deal with the directions exactly. Uh, the first type of blotting technique that was discovered in 1975 by E. M. Southern, based on the name of the discoverer, it was southern blotting. But later in, seven, in 1979, four years later, uh, another technique was discovered uh, that is known as a northern blotting because you know southern blotting is a process of detecting DNA in 1975 it was discovered in 1979 they discovered the process of detecting RNA so RNA and DNA very closely linked so earlier it was southern blotting that's why they name it as a northern blotting when it detecting to the RNA now what is the process of northern blotting it's very very similar that of the southern blotting in any blotting process there are three major stages the first stage is to prepare the target. The target in this case of northern blotting is RNA. So for example, RNA is present inside the cell all the time in the cytosol of the cell or inside the nucleus. So what we can do here, we simply extract the content of the cell that should contain RNA. Especially we do the process of this northern blotting in case of messenger RNA or mRNA and the com content of mRNA is present inside the cytosol. So we take that RNA out, we extract that part of the RNA. So we have a RNA mixture which is a whole RNA mixture of the cell. But again like any other detection techniques or blotting techniques, the idea is to find out a specific target of the RNA which we know the sequence by the way. So how would you find out a known sequence of the RNA from a mixture of other RNAs? The only way to do that is do the hybridization technique or nucleic acid hybridization because you know nucleic acid has a very important feature for example if I tell you the target RNA that we are looking for has the sequence A A U U A G G C U A for example this is the RNA sequence that we want to find out okay we know that DNA and RNA both have a complementary feature. So if they find any complementary strand, they are going to attach to it. The complementary strand of this RNA will be, you know, if we, if we uh, get this strand in based on RNA sequence, it will be U, U, A, A, U, C, C, G, A, U. If we think of this complementary strand as a DNA fragment, it could be T, T, A, A, T, C, C, G, A, T. So these are the complementary DNA strands that we have to generate. So once we generate these strands, we can put the strand as a probe and that can bind to the target DNA. Now if we attach these this strands, these target strands along with some sort of radio labeled or radio, radioactive molecule or if we attach with any sort of chemical or enzyme molecule which is giving us light after the reaction, we can accurately identify the position of the target RNA in the mixture of RNA while we separate it in the gel. Remember that. That is what we do in the northern blotting. So the first step what we do is we extract all the RNA. Then we break those RNAs down in smaller fragments because you know RNAs tend to present in complex secondary structure forms because they are sec single stranded so they, ha they can have the ability to pair with uh, wherever they find a complementary region. So RNA never presents like a linear strands like that 
RNA always present in the very complex structures and secondary structures formed, right? We want linear structure of the RNA and the fragments of linear structure of the RNA for the process of nucleic acid probing or nucleic acid hybridization. Then only we can find out the specific sequence of the RNA. Now, if you look at here, so how can we break this secondary structure of the RNA down into linear form? So, in that case, we need to use a denaturing gel electrophoresis process, which will help us to resolve the secondary structure into linear RNA. Then, we can separate that RNA using electrophoresis, which is an agarose gel electrophoresis. Then, we use the probe and then the process will be done. So, these whole stages will be known as the northern blotting. So, first what we do, so extraction is done. We have a secondary structure of the RNA, secondary structure of RNA. So, what we do now, we load this RNA onto agarose gel. Let us say this is the agarose gel that we are talking about. So, this is, this, this drawings are from the previous lecture that is southern blotting which is you, you will see that very, very similar. So, what we do, we load this thing, we load this secondary structure of the RNA in the agarose gel. Now, in the agarose gel when we load them, you know agarose gel that we use here in case of south northern blotting is different compared to the agarose gel we used in case of southern blotting. In this agarose gel, we have extra formaldehyde. We add formaldehyde in the gel. Why? Because this formaldehyde will help to resolve the secondary structure into linear form of the RNA. And that is very, very important. Otherwise, uh, the RNA will not be separated based on their length. The idea of using agarose gel is to separate nucleic acid contents based on their length. Because agarose is a polymer of small matrix and they will form small pores inside. So, smaller length RNA or DNA fragment can migrate further along this gel, while the larger fragments or longer fragments will migrate less in the gel. With the help of this, we can identify where the larger fragment of the RNA is present, where the smaller fragment of the RNA is present. But if the RNA is in secondary structure format, they will not follow this rule. So, we need to resolve the structure into linear form. We use formaldehyde to do that. Formaldehyde makes it linear and also a little bit heat that helps it to denature and then the RNA will migrate. So, once the, the agarose gel electrophoresis is complete, so we have the bands or the pattern of where exactly the different fragments of the RNA present. We get this idea as a band in the agarose gel. But the question is, agarose gel is fragile. We cannot use agarose gel for the probing process because for the probing we need to apply different solutions and buffers weight and all these things that will not be enough for uh, for holding all those tension by this uh, agarose gel so it's a better idea to transfer the content of the gel into a paper that is usually in case of southern blotting was a nitrocellulose filter paper now in case of this northern blotting we can also use nitrocellulose filter paper but it was found out that nitrocellulose paper is not working that well in case of northern blotting in this case we use amino benzoxymethyl paper or amino benzoxymethyl filter paper instead of a nitrocellulose uh, filter paper because you know uh, the, the, at, be, at the beginning we use nitrocellulose paper the results are different but then slowly uh, in search for a better uh, transfer medium, we use amino benzoxymethyl uh, filter paper. It is kind of a very uh, simple uh, that of the nitrocellulose paper or any nylon paper, but it has more affinity and greater binding affinity towards the RNA. So, what we do now, we take this, this gel, we take the gel, we put it here. So, now we do the process of imprinting or transferring the content of RNA from the agarose gel to the filter paper. Okay. And that is when the blotting term comes in. Blotting is the imprinting of a gel material onto the paper. And that is why we have this whole process. 
and this blotting technique of northern and southern is very very similar because both this technique uses the pro the, the the process of capillary action for transferring the content of dna or rna from the gel to the membrane filter now let's look at here in this total blotting setup in the blotting setup we have a buffer we have a of a buffer that is uh, that that will contain all the mainly it's it's water containing buffer mostly but we cannot use uh, plain water for any biological processes we buffer here and then on the top of buffer we put sponge a sponge helps there because the water will move sponge will help in the capillary activity and upon the top of the sponge we have the gel so let me let me just highlight the gel this is the gel agarose gel okay and on top of the gel we put the amino benzoxymethyl we put the membrane or filter let me write it down here this is the the rna uh, filter and we have this gel the sponge and on so look at here the gel and the filter paper are placed on top of each other first gel then on top that we have the filter and on the top of filter we put some paper towel okay and then on top of that we put some weight so this setup is kind of same in case of southern blotting as well as northern blotting okay now the idea is the the those buffer will flow based on the capillary activity from the bottom towards the top as we apply some weight from the top according to the capillary flow water can flow against the gravitation and it will flow from the bottom towards the top so as the water is moving it moves first through the sponge reaches the gel it passes through the gel as it's passing through the gel it is creating force to all those rna fragments that are present there so it will be pushed and the rna fragments are now released from the gel and then they will migrate towards this filter paper and once this rna fragments will go and attached to the filter paper there is no way those rna can migrate because filter paper is not permeable to rna molecules so rna will be stagnant it will be attached to the filter paper there while the buffer solution can easily pass through the membrane and it will reach the paper towels that's why we put a lot of paper towels stack there over so that in a sense of how exactly we push uh, the fragments of the rna Uh, and and apply it to attach to the membrane filter once it's attached to the membrane then the process is done we exclude everything out we take the membrane out now the membrane will have exact imprint of all those fragments of the rna that were present in the gel so now we take that membrane and remember one thing importantly because rna is single stranded so all these rnas are present in the in the in the filter paper then what we do we add the probe which is designed to go and bind exactly with the target rna only the probe is attached with radioactive or radio labeled isotope or it can be attached with any chemical luminescence molecule in either way this probe is going and bind only with a specific target and that is going to give us either light or any color or radio if it's radio labeled isotope then we put a extra film on top of that and after developing the extra film what we will get let's say the small version if i draw this small version of that we will only find one band where the target dna was present so you'll see by looking at this gel or, or auto radiogram we can easily tell which rna fragment carry our d rna of interest in this case let's say this one if we go back to the gel we can say yes this is the fragment that carries the target dna of our interest so that is how the uh, target rna of our interest sorry that is how the northern blotting is conducted it's very similar that of the southern blotting the difference is that in this case we need to use formaldehyde in the gel while we separating another difference is that uh, in this case of a uh, uh, southern blotting dna were attached to the membrane so we need to denature the another strand to make it a single strand but in case of rna we don't have to do that remember in case of rna hybridization or northern blotting we need to use we mostly used dna as a probe 
not RNA because RNA RNA interactions are not that good DNA interaction with RNA is mostly done so the the probe with the DNA is simply RNA DNA hybrid that we use but in case of southern blotting we use DNA DNA hybridization now the DNA that we produce here is called complementary DNA because it's designed uh, by looking at the complementary RNA structure okay so that in a sense is the difference between southern blotting and western uh, northern blotting okay so i hope you understand the video if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel because western blotting videos are going to come and also share this video with your friends thank you